Good evening guys and welcome back to DCS World Basic Fundamentals. Today we'll be starting a new course going over the MiG-29. Um, it definitely received a lot of requests and after doing some research of my own I have to concur that there isn't a whole lot of information about the MiG-29 out there. Um, she's sort of uh, the forgotten bird. I do want to preface this course by starting out saying that uh, I am not by any means an expert with the MiG-29. Um, but uh, just like with the F-15, I'll make sure that if there's information that I don't have, I'll get it. Okay? Um, and I'll make sure to get it out to you guys. For the course, we will be using the MiG-29 Sierra. The MiG-29 Sierra is um, slightly more advanced than the MiG-29 Alpha, especially in the realm of the radar suite. Um, so keep that in mind. When uh, you have the option to fly the Alpha or the Sierra, the Sierra is the way you want to go. Okay? So... Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in the cockpit. One last thing I'll touch on with the Alpha and Sierra. The controls, as far as I can tell, everything that I'm teaching with the Sierra does correspond with the Alpha. Okay, so everything that I tell you here should work in either aircraft. All right, so just like before, in today's, in the first course, we're just going to go over the cockpit. Um, now, by the cockpit, we're just going to look at the instruments that you will be using when flying uh, this particular bird. And... Uh, then we'll shut her down for today, and the next one we'll jump into assigning our controls and doing startup, taxi, and takeoff. All right, so let's go ahead and get after it. Go ahead and bring our camera down a bit. Starting up here at the top, we have our master caution warning light. Here we have our combined um, accelerometer and uh, AOA indicator. You have your AOA indicator here on the left side, giving you your angle of attack, your current G load here on the right. Um, Coming down to the gauges, on the far left here we have our um, airspeed indicator, then we have our barometric altitude indicator here, and then down here we have our mechanical instruments indicator. A um, couple things on the mechanical instruments indicator. So first thing we see is a whole bunch of just module indications here, so let me break them down for you. First, these bottom three are the landing gear. As long as they are illuminated, your landing gear is down. However, touching on the landing gear, this center warning light here, if it's ever lit up, it means that there's a problem with the landing gear, so keep that in mind. Always watch for that. The back two here on either side of the wing are your flaps. The front two are your forward slats, and this guy and this guy here are the speed brakes. So if we were to go to the rear of the aircraft, the speed brake is right between the exhaust nozzles. Okay, so if we come in close, you can see how it's sort of triangular shaped there. It's got a point on it. When you deploy the speed brake, one flap comes down and one flap comes up. Okay, and uh, so that's what those corresponding indicators are here, indicating that they're in motion. Coming up to our gauge here, we have our ADI, or Attitude Director Indicator. We have our Horizontal Situation Indicator here on the left, or on the bottom, excuse me. On the right here, we have our Vertical Velocity Indicator, so um, reading our ascent or descent rate in uh, meters per minute. And then here we have our current um, speed in Mach rating. Okay, so you can see that it's got 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, etc. going into 1, going all the way up to 2.8. That's our current Mach rating. You have your mission clock right here hiding behind the brake handle. Let's go ahead and unpause the camera, bring us over here. All right. So then here on this guy, we have our radar altimeter. The radar altimeter gives you your current uh, altitude according to ground level. You have your engine RPM gauge. You can see sort of here, there's two needles there, actually. There's engine 1 and engine 2. Right here you have your flare uh, count indicator. So currently we have 60 flares on board. We have our turbine temperature gauges here. And then we have your fuel quantity gauge here. On the fuel quantity gauge, um, it gets a little tricky. So let's go over that for just a second here. Okay, so up here at the top you have your central tank. Okay, and what these are are warning lights. So if these lights are illuminated, it means that the tank is empty. So keep that in mind. Um, in this case, illuminated is not good. All right, so we have our central tank warning light here up at the top. Coming down here, you have your wing tanks, which is the next one down. Okay. Then down here at the far bottom, you have tank number one and then tank number three, which I believe are the external tanks. Okay. You have your bingo fuel line right here. Okay. Um, you know, let's go ahead and bring up some electrical power here so I can show you some things. So we'll hit right shift and Lima. All right. So now you see the f total fuel quantity on board comes up. Okay, and then once the engines are running and you have an actual spooling rating going, you, this will also give you an estimated range based on your current fuel. Okay, and that will obviously adjust based on airspeed. 
Down here in the bottom right here, moving down, you have our RWR, which we'll go over in much further detail as we move on through the courses. And then moving over to our bit panel here, so we have our warning lights panel here. Uh, the only one I want you guys to be aware of at the moment is your neutral trim lights. Okay, so we have the rudder trim here on the top right. We have the stabilizer trim here on the top left, so your uh, vertical uh, trimming. And then you have your aileron trim light here on the um, step two light. Now, what these lights indicate is that currently there's no trim set on the axis, okay? So the trim is currently in its neutral position. All right, and then the rest of the warning lights will go over as the tutorials move forward, okay? Much like the RWR, it's, it's something that we're gonna go over um, later on. Um, something I do wanna touch on real quick, as you notice, I have not put on any mods. I have not set anything to the English language. Um, I am going to do my best to respect the incredible Russian designers of the MiG-29 and try to keep everything in its native language. Um, so if I stumble over anything a little bit or happen to you know, trip over my own tongue and, and have to go back and change what something is or what something says, uh, please forgive me. I'll do my best. Any of you guys who are of the native land of Russia, please uh, feel free to uh, add in anything that I might have missed that you guys can catch right off the bat, okay? All right, so moving on from that, now that we got that one little out of the way, let's come up here to the top real quick. Pause our camera. So currently in navigation mode, we have our HUD up and we have our current indicated airspeed. Okay, we have our heading tape with the heading carrot. We have our current altitude according to radar. Um, in the MiG-29, anything below 1,000 feet, you will see this R here, which automatically uh, indicates your current altitude in meters um, according to the radar. Once you exceed, I believe it's above 2,000 feet is when I saw it, the R should go away, letting you know that you are now on barometric pressure. But we'll get into more of that as we get airborne. Um, the, here we have our uh, aircraft datum. Okay, so much like what we saw in the W in the F-15, now we're seeing, uh, here's our indication in the MiG-29. We have our horizon line and we have our current bank angle and then the current distance to the uh, selected waypoint. And then down here we have our heads down display, which you'll notice matches the exact same information we see on the heads up display. The purpose of that um, is sort of a redundant system in the event that lighting um, becomes a situation where the HUD is no longer visible, you got the sun behind it, whatever it may be, you have a heads down display that gives you the same information. The only time that I've seen so far that they do not display the same information is if you have the air to ground gun sight. The air to ground gun sight populates on the hood while the standard HUD information populates down here in the heads down display. Okay. So that pretty much sums everything up for the initial course going over the cockpit. Um, we're not gonna really need a whole lot else. Um, oh, you know what, real quick, we'll come over to the left side. We do have our landing gear handle here. Um, and then here is the only one you're going to want to watch is the a AFCS or automatic flight control system. So your autopilot um, and we'll go over that um, when we get airborne and start talking about navigation and such because um, each light does have an indication of what uh, autopilot mode you're in. That is one of the very handy things about the MiG-29 is the autopilot is a little bit more intuitive than it was in the F-15. Um, I will say that I'm really excited to do this. Uh, course. Uh, initially, I was a little hesitant because, as I said, I'm not particularly what you would call an expert of the MiG-29, but uh, I have a feeling I will be by the end of this. Um, a couple of things have already imp impressed me. Uh, the EO system, so the uh, helmet-mounted uh, target tracking system, and then we have the uh, ILS. I was incredibly impressed with that. I can't wait to show you guys that one. It was a uh, very neat system. Very neat system. Um, makes landing a breeze. Uh, so exciting stuff to come. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is just the beginning I just wanted to make sure that you guys uh, knew where we at the channel is still live and uh, get something out to you Make sure to hit that like and subscribe guys. There's a whole lot more to come We're gonna get into some really exciting stuff with the MIG and really see what this bird can do um, I'll make sure to keep it interesting until next time guys. This is overkill. Stay safe. We'll see you